Dear students, I welcome on behalf of Community Institute of Organic Agriculture. Today, I am discussing about visual organs of insects. How there is mechanism of visualization, how the compound eyes, how omatidia function in the insects. You can watch the video and then powerpoint presentation as well let us watch the video first the mechanism of compound eyes how it is functional let us watch What do insects really see? Since the compound eyes of insects are comprised of a mosaic of small facets, the popular media likes to represent insect mosaic vision like this. However, insects actually see this. Let us examine the structure of the insect compound eye and learn how the compound eyes visualize the landscape for insects. The main visual structure of insects is the compound eye. The compound eye appears to be comprised of many hundreds or thousands of tiny facets. Each facet is actually the corneal lens for an individual photoreceptor unit called an ometidium. Let us look at the detailed structure of an ometidium. An ometidium is divided into light gathering and light detecting components. The corneal lens is transparent cuticle that is secreted by two modified epidermal cells called corneogen cells. Corneogen cells secrete the corneal lens when new cuticle is formed at the time of the molt. The corneogen cells secrete the corneal lens then later differentiate into the primary pigment cells. Below the corneal lens is the crystalline cone. This structure is either secreted or formed by four cells called Semper's cells. Light enters the corneal lens and is focused on the light detecting apparatus by the crystalline cone. The light detecting apparatus of each ometidium contains seven to eight light sensitive photoreceptor cells called retinula cells. Retinula cells are actually photoreceptor neurons that detect wavelengths of light. The light-sensitive dendritic region of the retinula cell is the rhabdomere. Together, all of the individual rhabdomeres are referred to as the rhabdome. Rhabdomeres consist of parallel microvilli containing light-detecting visual pigment molecules embedded into their plasma membranes. Light entering the cornea and cone of an ometidium is focused on and detected by visual pigments embedded in the rhabdomere membranes of the retinula cells. Retinula cells are surrounded by 12 to 18 secondary pigment cells so that each ometidium can be functionally isolated from its neighbors. Ometidia sit on a basement membrane in the retina and axons from the retinula cells combine below the membrane to form the optic nerve that leads to the protocerebrum of the insect brain. Let us see how insect compound eyes function to detect light and perceive visual information. Insect species that are active during the daytime, when light is abundant, have photopic ometidia in their compound eyes. 
The photopic ametidium was earlier called an apposition ametidium because the base of the crystalline cone is in direct contact, or as it were, in apposition to the rhabdome. In photopic ametidia, incoming light is focused on the base of the crystalline cone and directly onto the rhabdome, the light-sensitive sensory region of the retinula cells. Light rays that enter the corneal lens at angles are absorbed by screening pigments located in the cytoplasm of the pigment cells that surround photopic ametidia. The importance of the screening pigments is seen best from the perspective of the retina. The screening pigments prevent light entering at angles through one ametidial lens from activating the rhabdome in adjacent ametidia of the retina. Light entering the corneal lens of an ametidium stays within that ametidium. In photopic eyes, each ametidium serves as an individual visual unit for viewing only that portion of the visual scene that is directly in line with the ametidium's position within the compound eye. Next we will compare the structure and function of the photopic eye of day-active insect species to the eye of night-active insect species. Ametidia in the compound eyes of nocturnal insects are referred to as scotopic ametidia. The structure of scotopic ametidia is similar to that of photopic ametidia, except that scotopic ametidia appear to have an open space, referred to as the clear zone between the crystalline cone and the retinula cells. The clear zone actually contains transparent crystalline tracts that arise from the retinula cells and extend to the crystalline cone. The crystalline tracts act as light guides. In scotopic ametidia, incoming light is focused on the base of the crystalline cone and conducted to the rhabdome by the crystalline tracts. Unlike photopic ametidia, scotopic ametidia are sensitive to the changes in light intensity that occur during the day and night cycles and they detect light differently during the light and dark phases of the daily circadian cycle. During the daytime, when light is abundant, scotopic ametidia detect light similar to photopic ametidia. The shielding pigments in the secondary pigment cells of scotopic ametidia absorb light rays that enter the corneal lens at an angle, and each ametidium detects light independently of neighboring ametidia, just as in photopic ametidia. However, as night approaches and the intensity of light decreases, the shielding pigments of scotopic ametidia contract upward toward the distal end of the secondary pigment cells. Distal contraction of the shielding pigments in scotopic ametidia opens the basal portion of the pigment cells so that light entering the diopteric apparatus of one ametidium can pass through that ametidium and strike the rhabdomes in adjacent ametidia. In this manner, scotopic ametidia interact cooperatively to form multiple superimposed images on the rhabdomes of neighboring ametidia. This interaction compounds the sensitivity of the scotopic ametidia to light. Because scotopic ametidia form multiple overlaid images on adjacent ametidia, the scotopic ametidium is sometimes referred to as a superposition ametidium. The superimposed images are probably poorly defined, but detailed vision is less critical to nocturnal insects than is the enhanced ability to detect dim light. Hence, the night phase superposition compound eye has low visual acuity, but high light sensitivity. Let us observe how the shielding pigments react in the scotopic ametidia of the retina during several light and dark cycles to illustrate the interactions between adjacent ametidia.
Next, we will see how the mosaic eye perceives the visual scene. Let us now enter the compound eye and see the world as viewed by an insect. Here is how the world might appear to an insect from within a single omatidium. Each omatidium views the visual scene according to its position in the compound eye and the width of its lens. The view from each omatidium is then integrated by the nervous system to provide a view of the entire visual scene. Here is the mosaic view as observed by an insect with this type of eye. The lens and cones of insect omatidia are not capable of changing their focal length, so insects are probably nearsighted and distant objects appear blurry. Note that the observed scene is most distinctive when broken patterns caused by the edges of structures occur within the field of view of a single omatidium or between adjacent omatidia. Notice how conspicuous the pattern is when it has sharp contrasts of light and dark within the field of view of a single omatidium. Conversely, the scene is least distinctive when a nearly similar pattern occurs within the field of a single omatidium or between adjacent omatidia. Likewise, movement within the field of a single omatidium is poorly observed, but movement across the field of several omatidia provides a high degree of sensory input. Here is how something close might appear as it moves past. Note that the most information is provided as it cuts across the fields of adjacent omatidia. Finally, let us juxtapose a compound eye from a species such as a dragonfly that has many more omatidia per unit area. Note that by increasing the number of omatidia per unit area, a greater number of individual omatidia detect broken patterns within their field of view as compared to the single larger omatidium. Since each omatidium acts as a visual unit, this has the effect of increasing the detail or resolution that the insect can detect in its field of view. Note how many omatidia the flying insect crosses in this situation. This increases the sensitivity of the dragonfly's eye to the presence of its prey. Therefore, insect vision is developed to be most sensitive to changing patterns in movement rather than to a highly resolved, detailed view of the visual scene, such as is found with the vertebrae. So, all of you watched the video in which we see the compound eye functioning, how the compound eye structure looks like, and how its microscopic structure, omatidium. The basic unit of compound eyes is omatidium, and how the omatidium functions. You see how they lit up in the light how the light is passing there are two type of a structure one we are called a position eye all have separate unit separate structure and one is another was superimposed eye one has in the center there is a clear zone in the superimposed eye and light is passing from one omatidia to another omatidia and there is compound different omatidia are working together so especially in the nocturnal insects the insects who work in the night they are called nocturnal and the insect who work in the daytime are called diurnal so let us also watch the 
PowerPoint presentations. So there are, you can see different type of insects. They have variety. Diurnal means they are working in the daytime, in the light. You can see the butterflies, the dragonfly, they are mostly working in the daytime, only in the light. So they are called diurnal. Insect working in the night, dark, they are called nocturnal. And insect working in the morning time or in the evening time or to be light or they are, if they are active in the morning time, they are called matutinal. If they are active in the evening time, they are called vesper time. So there is long history of eye study. The study of eye is also called optics. From 1665, uh, starting from Robert Hooke, the grey drone fly, first he examined a fly that is called the grey drone fly. Then 1695, very important year when Antony von Leeuwenhoek discovered the microscope and first time he see the bacteria through microscope. In 1700, compound eyes or metidia and microscope came into light. In 1870, histological studies are started. What are A position eyes? What are rhabdoms? These were studied. Then in 1879, Green Nature observed receptors, omatidia, photoreceptive structures. In 1891, Sigmund Exner, a very good scientist, who studied the functioning of the compound eyes, how compound eyes work, he mentioned in 1891. In 1940, Carl von Fisch, Frisch studied the eyes of bees. We patterns of polarized light navigation. In 1963, Kuno Kiss Field studied the mechanism of inverted image and erect image. How image looks inverted and how image looks erect. So there is a long history of optics. This is compound eye of insect, all I have seen. They are made up of a small, many homatidium, many homatidia are there. It may be 100 to 1000 homatidia in compound eyes. So human beings have only simple eyes, only one lens. On the other hand, the insects have compound eyes and they have multiple lenses. Several lenses are there. These are the structure of oscilla or simple eyes. And this is compound eye. You can see multiple lenses are attached to each, each other. They are compound eyes. Multiple lenses are attached. They are compound eyes. And this is also fibrous region, this is neck region, this is head region and this is eye. So these photoreceptors or visual organs are part of sense organ also. In the previous class we have studied different sense organs like mescano receptor, chemical receptor, temperature receptor, light receptor. And the last one was photoreceptor. And today we are studying the visual organs or photoreceptors. How light is transmitted into the eyes and how light passes through different organs of eyes. They are called photoreceptor because they receive the light. 
so they are called photoreceptors simple line insects have 2 to 3 number of simple eyes on the center of the head these simple eye have several structure some lateral ocella are there they are also called stigmata dorsal ocelli sub so, dorsal lateral ocelli are called stigmata you can see the photographs as well this is simple eye photograph primary ocellus is there cornea is there c stand for cornea corneal hypodermis that is ch that is called corneal hypodermis r e t stand for retina these regions are retina in the simple eyes ocular nerves n are nerves they connecting tissues they are nursing the eyes with nutrients and r is rhabdom very important function has rhabdom so this is simple eyes and then compound eyes compound eyes have many lenses and the unit of compound eyes is called ometridium the number of ometridia varies some insect have six or few few ometridia and some have more than 2000 more than 28000 as well so the rhabdom contains an array of closely packed micro tubules where light sensitive pigments are stored so light pigments are stored in the rhabdom and they lit up when the light is coming in the retinular cells continue with the axons that pass through the basement membrane forming an optic nerve which remain connected to the optic lobes of the brain these are neurons they are connected to through the neurons and they are also connected to the brain they can send message to the central nervous system this is the structure of one ometridia the top portion is called cornea this is called crystalline cone there are pigments which there are receptors of light they can receive the light and they transfer to the lower portion this is lower iris and in the center it is rhabdom where the light also light is detected in the rhabdom the first half the first 50% area is called light receptors they receive the light and the second half second 50% area is called light detector they detect the light and accordingly they respond so this is the structure of compound eyes you can see many lenses are there many lenses due to multiple lenses the power of vision is high in the insects in comparison to human beings human beings have only one eye lens and insects have many eye eye lenses are there and insect have more power in vision if they are flying in the sky although they are seeing the whole uh, sky they are watching the sky but it, it is the most not the case in the human beings human beings are not able to visualize all over when they are running or when they are in motion 
so according to adaptations insect have two type of adaptations one is called optical adaptations and another is called neural adaptations what is why needed adaptations because insect have different preparations under dim light conditions when the light is very high in the diurnal in the day time there is no problem all working is fine but when the light is dim when there is evening or more light is down then insect adapt their structure they can change the position of eyes eye cells they can make their eyes as super position eyes they can change the structure of cornea they can change the dioptric apparatus they can change the migration of pigments from within the retina the pigments can move from one retina to another and they work accordingly the dimensions the size of the eye compound eyes the size of the retina also changes so these are the optical adaptations and in neural adaptations different neurons are working there and they have different role different phenomena they have different message different working a means diameter and l means length you can see the diameter only 36 micrometer and length of the rhabdom is 8 micrometer in other insects like honey bee or apis mellifera or apis indica the diameter of rhabdom is 20 micrometer only and the length of the rhabdom is 2 micrometer very small they are microscopic nocturnal insects nocturnal insects like bees and bats they have different eyes they have a huge ocelli simple eye is bigger 1.8 times larger than the diurnal relatives there are two types of insects one is diurnal another is nocturnal diurnal have less sizes the sizes of the compound eyes is less in the diurnal insects and the nocturnal insects have large amount of size pigment migration for dim light to visualize the dim under dim light conditions insect eyes can migrate their pigments from one cell to another cell to visualize the thing under low light conditions there are two type of migration one is called radial migration another is called longitudinal migration in radial migration the movement is taking from outer side to the center side or from the center side to the outer side in the longitudinal pigment migration there is length wise movement of the pigment across the cell so one is length wise movement of pigments and another is radius wise movement they are moving towards the center or they are coming outward from the center these are two type of compound eyes one is called apoposition in which the complete units are separate from each other one ometidium is separate from other ometidium and the one ometidium is not sharing with the other ometidiums because of they have separate structure their light is not passing from one ometidium to other ometidium in the superposition case the center is blank you can see the center area is blank so the light can pass from one 
omatidia to another omatidia then it is falling diagonal not a straight when in the light of moon during the night time or nocturnal period the light from one omatidium can pass through another omatidium so from the lights are passing from multiple cells and these multiple cells are causing vision in the insects and this type of vision is called superimposed vision these are the photographs these are different lenses of the compound eyes below the compound eyes there is cone yellow color they are called crystalline cone below the crystalline cone there is retinal cells these cells are called retinal cells and the center of the omatidia center and bottom this area is called rhabdom rhabdom is the light detector so they are very important organ of the eyes rhabdom size is in micrometer you can see 2 to 50 micrometer is there the size is the size in apis mellifera that is anibi is 2 micrometer only the size of rhabdom in m genelis is 8 micrometer so they are very microscopic but they have a specific role and important role in the vision of insects now neuronal neuronal adaptations how neurons are adapting some neurons are more working some are less working so they are working in combination with each other different pairs are working there these are the summary the outcome of the class what we are studying in this study we conclude that in compound eyes the structure and physiology is different than the simple eyes as one of the mechanism for their efficient forging each behavior getting avoidance from the predators and also concluded that not only the chemical but other structures also affect the vision so the compound eyes provide insects a larger area of view insect can view up to 360 degree celsius without moving their body parts and the heightened sensitivity means higher sensitivity of insects eyes than human eyes their eyes possess much wide field of visualization higher light sensitivity and superior sensitivity to motion and when compared to single lens eye of human beings so they are more powerful and the time is for discussion now